I plead my life to the Emperor in hopes of serving under Captain Titus. Space Marines 2 finally came out, and after waiting for what felt like a millennium, perhaps 41 of them... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. Fuck you. Honestly, I have a lot to say about this game, and uh, most of them are positive. But as someone who is a really big fan of Warhammer and is currently reading the books and occasionally plays the tabletop game with uh, their brothers, I play Black Templar. I know some of you are going to hate me for that, right? But I don't care. They're cool, okay? I am also very excited for the shows that apparently is in the works with Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill, please guide us to enlightenment. You're the only one that, I, that can't. And what they did to you in The Witcher is so nasty. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so the hype for this game was insane, and I honestly thought that they were not going to be able to deliver it because whenever it reaches, whenever a game reaches a certain point in hype level, you just know that the expectations are a little too high, okay? For example, like GTA 6. I'm sure it's going to be a great game, but to deliver to that high of an expectation is going to be pretty fucking hard, but they're rock stars, so I'm sure they'll... You know. However, whenever it became available on September 5th and I saw the review start popping out of people playing it and they're like, this game fucking rocks. I got on so fast. Got on that shit so quick. I got that shit like it was the Nintendo Switch whenever it came out. You guys remember that? You guys remember whenever you had to go to five different stores to find one of these one of these things? People were fighting over the Switch, dude. That's crazy. All of the doubts that I could have had instantly dropped though whenever I played the first opening mission and saw the opening cutscene of Astro Militarium looking into the sky and seeing Tyranid Sports dropping down, and then it cuts to Death Watch Space Marine. Now, if you don't know what Death Watch Space Marine are, I'm gonna give you a little lore lesson right now, okay? So, there are Space Marine chapters. You have, like, your Ultramarines, the blue ones, and you have your Blood Angels, the red ones, you have, like, your Night Raven, your Iron Hands, your Salamanders, all typically are presented by looking different and having different, um, colors and, you know, emblems to them. Black Templars, for example, have this little cross that goes on their knees and their shoulders and they're black with typically white pauldrons. Okay, cool. Now, Death Watch are the elites of those chapters that get chosen to participate in Death Watch, which is like a black ops group that goes in and you send them in if you want shit done. Their only goal is to eliminate any Xeno scum that you send them to go kill. If you want shit done, you send these guys. So you know whoever you're playing as in this cutscene is the elite of the elite. Just imagine that Warhammer is like everything that you thought was cool at 10 and then times that by 10 and make it to where everything is gory and sucks and everyone is in complete misery all the time, but it's everyone so it's normal. Everything in this lore is over the top. So it opens with these Death Watch Space Marines flying into this planet that's been taken over by Tyranids, and they hear Tyranids start prying on the aircraft that they are flying in. They all silently, in unison by the way, stand up and get ready to defend and prepare for things to go south really fast like the goddamn Giga Chads that they are, not saying a word to each other. The Tyranids eventually pry open the doorways and they begin hacking and slashing and ripping and tearing and fucking shooting all these things out and then one of them gets taken out by a Tyranid. That's pretty badass, right? It's pretty cool. Now, I want you to keep in mind that all of these guys are fighting for an Emperor that they all love, and the Emperor, who is in this state, just fucking like a vegetable, takes a thousand people a day to stay alive. And his prime, though, he was... His prime was pretty crazy. You get taken out of the ship, and you basically land on the ground, and you begin looking for the rest of your squad mates. This is where you get introduced to the level design, and the graphics, and also the combat, and also parrying. There's parrying, and as a guy who loves the Soul series and just made a video on Ultra Kill and just made a video on Black Myth Wukong, I was so ready for this. And I opted to play the story on veteran difficulty because that's what it told me it was intended to be experienced on, and after playing all of the d story through that difficulty, I can confidently say that yeah, that was definitely the right choice. But after you play through the opening mission, you will learn that that Death Watch guy that you were playing as is actually Captain Titus, or I referred to him as Captain Titus from earlier. My go. For the mission, you go talk to the chaplain, and the chaplain reinstates you as an Ultramarine. Now, he was an Ultramarine, but for some of his actions from the first game were a little shady, and so they were like, hey, we're gonna put you on Death Watch. Even though it's like a great honor to be on Death Watch, I think that he just likes being an Ultramarine, because, you know, that's where he's originally from, so fucking... Disguise his dad. It's a lot. There's a lot going on there. But you get reinstated as an Ultramarine to go serve with your brothers again. And in the rest of the story, you are trying to defend this world from a Tyranid invasion and also uh, prove to all of your brothers and all their Ultramarines and the Chaplain 
that you are deserving of the spot and you are in fact not a heretic. Which, in this universe, it's a little easy to become a heretic if you show an ounce of doubt. I loved the veteran mode difficulty. It was hard enough that I was sweating my ass off whenever I was playing, feeling like I was in the CSGO 2016 Cloud9 lineup. Um, rest in peace, that was probably the peak of my life that I will never get back. And I had to try very hard, but it wasn't to the point where I was completely locked into playing a certain play style because it was that difficult. Like some games that crank up the difficulty really high, it kind of locks you into playing into this play style that you have to in order to stay alive. Space Marines 2 was not really that way for me. But it also was easy enough at times that it was rewarding for me to get better at it. And let me tell you, the combat pulls you in with all of the gamer brain traditions, okay? Big ass guns, check. Cool ass guys doing cool ass shit, check. Long capes that flow in the wind like you're Batman, check. Comically large ammunition, check. But you see, the combat works in a pretty simple but very fun way. So you have your normal health, that doesn't regenerate at all if it gets hurt, the red one up here. And you typically have to just heal by uh, using your medical stims or using your character's main ability. However, similarly to Bloodborne, whenever you get hurt, the portion that you were at before you got hurt kind of saves white. And if you attack an enemy and do damage to them, that damage will refill the white portion of your health back up to what it was. And if you do a finisher, it refills it all the way. However, your shields can be regenerated, and it's through a number of ways. One of them is performing finishers. If you get an enemy low enough, you can click a execute button on them, and then Captain Titus will do some crazy rip them in half or tear off their fucking tear off their arm and then put their arm through their chin, you know, something like that. And then they'll gain a shield. Another one is parrying, as I mentioned previously. You'll see this big blue circle pop up, and if you click the parry key in time, uh, you will catch an enemy mid-air, or you'll deflect an attack. And if you catch them mid-air, you'll stomp on them and kill them instantly, granting you shield. And if you stop the attack, you'll probably stun them and then get some shield along with it. Now, another one of these is doing a critical hit. Now, a critical hit happens whenever you either stun an enemy or parry an enemy's normal attack. See, if you do enough damage to an enemy, uh, they will get stunned. A red cross here will appear on them, indicating to you that you can do a critical hit on them. Captain Titus will shoot them and probably either kill them or do a lot of damage to them, and then you'll get some shields for it. However, you can also parry an enemy's normal attacks. So if you memorize their attack pattern, uh, you, can, you can parry that shit, and then a red cross here will also pop up on them. Which is sometimes you have to use it in a swarm to get out of there. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Whenever you're fighting a horde of like 50 Tyranids and you're low on ammo, you don't have any grenades, and your only option is to parry and get these critical attacks in, it is crucial that you hit them. However, it is very satisfying whenever you can consistently keep cycling between finishers and parrying and critical hits and keep your shield regenerating enough to where you don't take any health damage, especially on a section that you've been struggling with. Because there are some sections where it is pretty hard and I died quite a few times. And finally achieving that and overcoming that feels very good. I mean, there was a lot of times where I was 1 HP and I was surviving solely off of just regenerating my shield as much as I could, praying that it doesn't break. I had to parry that shit so many times, dude. I was back in the cathedral with that pontiff guy. It was hard. But the best way that I can describe this game, that the reason I love it so much is because it feels like a genuine mid-2000s era Xbox game that I would have loved. It makes you feel like you're being tucked in bed again, dude. It's enough to make a grown man cry. It is so welcoming to me to just play a casual, good-ass story game with undeniably great gun mechanics and an amazing fighting mechanics with these in-depth levels that are have some of the best backdrops I have ever seen. If you see an enemy in the backdrop of these levels, shoot them because you can. You will get a hit marker and then they'll fall over and die which makes it feel like a genuine battlefield instead of this kind of scenic set piece that you're just kind of put on. And it is like that for almost every level. It makes you really feel like an eight foot tall, smaller clone of your dad that's a war machine, but not really. Yeah. And it carries an amazing story. The levels and guns are in tandem with this amazing voice acting and an emotional roller coaster of a story with the character arcs that makes you hooked in there real good. You're not moving from your seat for a while, man. I feel like the beauty of less is more is truly present here. Like this game makes me feel like Bulletstorm did back in the day. If you don't know about Bulletstorm, go look it up. It's a wonderful game. 
I really don't want you to think that I'm like booming out and I'm like, these new games don't know how to get shit done because I, I love modern games. I mean, I love, you know, the modern gaming style of like interconnecting skill trees, skill based matchmaking and movement kings and this huge like just this checklist almost that we come to expect from a lot of games. It's nice to have a game that does a few things really, really well and not have to worry about these other connecting things and just kind of focus on the game for what it is. I enjoyed every single second of the main story and I really want to play it again, honestly, and I'm going to play the shit out of the operations. But that's all I really wanted to say about the story, so next is the PvP and PvE mode. And I fucking love the PvP mode because it feels like Gears of War 3 to me. It is the classic third person, you see someone, you shoot their shit until they fall over, and you have a dodge key, and you have your classes that you pick so that you can attack someone in your favorite way. Alright, you got a sniper, you snipe someone. You got your, your sword, you start hacking and slashing. You got your gun, shoot them with that comically large round that explodes on impact. Now, obviously, there are some classes that are uh, a little bit weaker than others, but I do think that as the game ages and it gets older, the devs will figure out what more of the landscape is that they want to promote to it and change the classes based on that. I overall just love the game modes. It just feels very classic, and I'm all here for it because it does what it does really well. The main star here, though, is the customization. You can edit every single armor piece on your space marine, fucking pauldron, legs, chest, helmet, one pauldron, one knee, it doesn't matter, you can do it, okay? But here's the one thing that I do want to see in the future, is I want to see more customization for the Chaos Marines, because right now, the Emperor side, you look at it, and you can do all this shit, and then you look at the Chaos side, and it, they kind of just look like noobs out of the box. Other than that, really not a lot of complaining. Okay, so now let's talk about the PvE mode, which is probably one of my favorite things ever. So, PvE mode is called Operations. I mentioned it earlier, you probably remember that. Now in Operations, you link up with your friends and you play through these missions and fighting off Tyranids, pretty much like a Left 4 Dead mission. Okay, but here's the cool thing about them that I really like. You see, as you played in the main story as Captain Titus, you would often be operating with a different squad of Space Marines that you would never see, but they would talk to you through the Vox or radio, update you on how their mission was going. In the Operation mission, instead of playing as Captain Titus's squad, you play as the other squad that you never saw doing what they did in that mission in the main story mode. So you'll, you'll be the guy that Voxes to Captain Titus from the main story mission, and you'll be doing their part of that story. Isn't that the coolest fucking thing ever? Whenever I saw it, I was like, that is so cool, dude. That is such a, just like a little cool thing that matters so much. Right now, I think there are four operations, but I think they're adding on planning a lot more, and as far as I'm concerned, the chaos customization is really the only thing I have for PvP. Now let's get to the main issue of the game. As I've seen from a lot of the internet, uh, there is some really big connectivity issues, especially on console. I don't know what's going on with you console guys, but apparently you guys cannot play the game for jack shit with your friends. Now as a PC guy, I haven't experienced any of this, but that is completely anecdotal and that is not like a real fucking viewpoint. So I needed to talk about it because apparently it has been happening to a lot of different people. But I think that's really all I wanted to say. Uh, this game is amazing and if you're a Warhammer fan, please go buy it or if you've been looking for a good action game to kill time with your friends, go buy it. Uh, I started college again recently, so I'm not going to be able to get videos out as soon as I would like to and I am sorry about that, but I am still trying because I love doing this to death and I am going to do it until the day that I die. So, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and I will see you guys next time.